Coming up, as the country is swept by a tsunami of government corruption, we look at some of the current stories highlighting how money is poisoning our democracy. Keep watching. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe and get notified of new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Tory co-chairman Ben Elliott is currently at the centre of a breaking cash for access scandal. Yes, nine years after Tory co-treasurer Peter Crudus was forced to resign after a similar scandal, the Tories are at it again. Back in 2012, billionaire Peter Crudus was filmed offering access to the then Prime Minister David Piglover Cameron and Chancellor George Osborne in return for large donations made via Liechtenstein bank accounts that he offered to launder. This is the same Peter Crudus, who Boris Alexander de Feffel Johnson made Baron Crudus when appointing him to the House of Lords this year, despite him failing the vetting process and against the advice of the Appointments Commission. Days later, Crudus donated half a million pounds to the Tory party. This brazen government are involved in industrial scale corruption in plain sight and the voting public just don't seem to care. With the unelected Crudus now ensconced for life, with a peerage and a seat in the House of Lords, voting on legislation affecting you and me, the corruption baton is these days held by the aforementioned Tory co-chair, Ben Elliott, who just so happens to be Prince Charles' nephew through his marriage to Camilla. Elliott runs a company called Quintessentially, who look after the requests, whims and foibles of their clients, ultra high net worth individuals. The bar seems to be people that have in excess of 20 million quid in spare cash and are worth many more times than that. Through this company, Elliot has introduced people to his uncle, Prince Charles, who is now finding himself dragged into the political mire of Tory corruption. Ben Elliot is at the centre of this web of corruption, as he was also behind the development of the Tory so-called advisory board. This is a secretive club that is only open to Tory donors giving at least a quarter of a million pounds each year for membership. Membership gives them privileged access to the Prime Minister and the Chancellor, richer than the Queen Sunak, through monthly meetings and conference calls, during which it has been reported that donors have pressured Johnson and Sunak for lower taxes and public spending cuts. The Financial Times has quoted whistleblower and Tory donor Mohammed Amersi as saying that the so-called advisory board is like the very elite quintessentially clients membership. One needs to cough up £250,000 per annum or be a friend of Ben. Another phrase that Amersi used to describe the arrangements was access capitalism. In other words, it's a pay to play scheme, with the big question being why are these high net worth individuals forking out such large sums to the Tories? And the big answer must be that the Tories are making it worth their while. Like those dodgy PPE contracts, where it's been calculated that for every one pound donated to the Tories by PPE suppliers, they receive contracts worth 11. That's what pay to play effectively means. What is becoming known as the Access Capitalism scandal is following closely on the heels of a couple of related scandals that have broken within the last month. In mid-July, ex-Bullingdon Club member and friend of Boris Johnson, Ewan Ferguson, was approved by Number 10 for an appointment to Whitehall's Sleaze Watchdog, the Committee on Standards in Public Life. Sir Alistair Graham, who was chairman of that committee until 2007, said it was desperate that a university mate of Johnson could be appointed to sit on the committee that is supposed to examine Sleaze. He added that it was a completely inappropriate appointment. Bear in mind, we already have a corruption czar, John Penrose, who was married to Dido Harding, the head of the failed test track and trace system, who has spaffed 37 billion quid on God knows what, other than a sizable chunk has ended up in the pockets of Tory cronies and donors. If this happened in some developing African nation, the media would see it clearly as corruption. Yet somehow, when it happens in our own country, the mainstream media just don't seem to challenge it at all effectively. Added to this cesspit of corruption, yesterday another related scandal broke. Apparently, MPs are serving on parliamentary groups while working in second jobs. An inquiry by the Common Standards Committee will examine whether MPs who sit on these all-party parliamentary groups, or APPGs, 
should no longer be paid by organisations in the same industries covered by these APPGs. What? Is that really happening? You ask? Yes, it seems that vested interests have been furthering their commercial agendas by paying MPs who sit on APPGs relevant to their industries. One good example is Lawrence Robertson, the Tory MP for Tewkesbury, who is Vice Chair of the Betting and Gaming APPG, but Robertson is also paid £2,000 a month to be the Parliamentary Advisor on Sport and Safer Gambling to the Betting and Gaming Council. Mark Garnier, Tory MP for Wire Forest is vice chair of the APPG for Space. He's paid £2,500 a month as chair of the advisory board of the Shetland Space Centre. Nick Fletcher, Tory MP for Don Valley, is a vice chair of the APPG for Electric Vehicles and is paid £800 a month as a director of Analog Electrics Limited, a government approved installer of electric charging points. Mark Palsy, Tory MP for Rugby, is the chair of the Packaging Manufacturing Industry APPG, the aim of which is to address issues facing the industry from regulation. He is also paid £2,500 a month as chair of the Food Service Packaging Association. Tory, 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 Tory. So corruption is rife from the very top of the party, quarter of a million pound annual subscriptions for access to the Prime Minister and Chancellor, right down to backbench grifters pocketing monthly salaries to influence policy on the shop floor of the Commons. The fact is, the electorate seem to have already priced in the fact that they have a corrupt, sleazy liar for a Prime Minister, so it would seem unlikely for a single scandal like Access Capitalism, in isolation, to end his government, or even seriously to damage it. But maybe, just maybe, this accumulation of corruption scandals will over time do the damage, like in 1992 when we saw John Major's Tories elected with a record vote, yet five years later, after a succession of financial scandals very similar to these, Blair swept a victory with a landslide. We could be almost three years from a general election, and with his personal popularity ratings tanking right now, it's only going to get worse for Johnson. Is it possible his own party might dump him as a way of moving on from this association with endemic corruption?